Number one, graph between pressure and volume. First of all, we start off with the equation PV equals to nRT, and then since V is the y axis, the vertical axis, we'll leave it on the left side and we bring everything over, including the P, to the right side. So we have V equals to nRT over P. And then we can see that if P increases, your V will be decreasing which is what is given as option D. Another way you can view it is something like your vertical axis is Y and your horizontal axis is X. So we have something like Y equals to 1 over X graph, which is this curve. Number two, which one will be explained by hydrogen bonding? So some of the options here butane, propane, SiH4, methane and all that, these are all induced dipole, induced dipole. The one that is hydrogen bonding will be water versus induced dipole, instantaneous dipole which is methane. That's why water will be a higher boiling point than methane, stronger intermolecular attraction. Number three, how can we calculate the mass of ammonia? Again, we will assume that it follows the ideal gas law under these conditions. PV equals to nRT. We have to convert the units to make it consistent. The temperature will have to be in kelvins, so 40 plus 273. Pressure, 95,000 pascal. Volume, we can live in cubic meters. So we put in all the values here. Our gas constant will be 8.31 for these units. The only unknown we have will be number of moles. So we find out N equals to 1.58 times 10 times 10 to the power of minus 3. And then we multiply by MR of ammonia, which we get 2.7 to the power of minus 2 grams. So just use this equation and make sure your units are consistent. Pascal, meter cube, kelvins. Number four, electrolysis of aluminium. What happens at the anode and cathode? First of all, understand at the anode we have oxidation and that will involve anions. Cathode will be reduction of cations. So what will happen, we have anode oxidized, we can pick out the phrases first, anode reducing will be wrong, cathode oxidized will be wrong, cathode reducing may be correct. So A, A and D we can consider and then we see that A, the anions are oxidized, D is anions are reduced, it should be anions being oxidized. So anode, oxidized, anions. Number five, enthalpy change of combustion. So what we have in the table will be the bond energies. And if we have enthalpy change of this reaction will be the reactants, we will need to break the bonds. So all these values will be positive values. Okay, two and a half of oxygen. On the other side we have products. We have to be sure of their bonds. Water, two single bonds. Carbon dioxide, we have each carbon dioxide to have a double bond or two double bonds O. But because there are two, it will be something like this. On the other side will be bond forming, it will be negative value. So we have bond energy of reactants minus bond energy of products. So 2 multiplied by 410 and 840, 2.5 of oxygen which is 4.96 each. So this is your reactants. And then we subtract the products, 
460 for water times 2 740 for carbon dioxide multiplied by 4 reactants minus products will be the heat of reaction in this case it's also heat of combustion forming of pi bonds when we form pi bonds we need a sideway overlap of the orbitals so which is represented by b right sideway overlap number 7 ionization energy of x so what we need to find out is how many outer electrons are there for x so we find the difference between the respective ionization energy and we see that there is a big jump when we go from removing the fifth electrons to the sixth electrons in other words it has five electrons on the outside on the outer shell that means x is in group 5 5 electrons outer shell x is in group 5 so what is the formula between x and a chloride if it's in group 5 we will understand that you will actually usually need three more electrons or to gain or share three more electrons with a chloride so one two three there'll be one lone pair so chlorine has seven electrons you will need to only share one so if you piece them together and join all the arms you will have Cl here Cl here and here so X Cl3 we have a Boltzmann distribution curve question 8 between X and Y X is the one that has a lower activation energy so this is the catalyzed reaction Y will be uncatalyzed so the catalyst present we have these two options and then temperature wise the one that has a lower peak that's to the right side will be the one that has a higher temperature the one that has a higher peak on the left side will be the lower temperature so higher temperature will be Q reacting P4O10 with calcium oxide and the only product is calcium phosphate so we try to form an equation and then we balance our phosphorus we have to set this as one because they want how many moles react with one mole of P4O10 so we fix this as one we try to balance the P here the phosphorus we have to be total of four we multiply by two and then we balance the calcium six here there will have to be six on this side the enthalpy change for this reaction will be 114 exothermic and then they compare what will be the enthalpy change for the reaction at the bottom well neutralization will be based on the amount of water form so to form two moles of water we have minus 114 this reaction also produce two moles of water with a strong acid and a base so the heat of reaction will be actually the same right? if this was one mole of water form you take 114 divided by 2 to compare but these are two moles form two moles form that's why it's the same eleven which molecule is planar 
we have to be familiar with the shapes of the molecule. This is trigonal planar, so it's flat. Here we have a carbon with four bonds. So long as there are four bonds, it will be tetrahedral with respect to this carbon here. So there's no way they'll be planar. It'll be 109.5 and it'll be, some of them will sticking out, some sticking in. So it can't be planar because of this carbon. It can't be planar because of these carbons which has four bonds. This one, one lone pair, three bond pairs. This is trigonal pyramidal. So it also will not be planar. So the planar one will be A. Number 12, ionic radius of sulfide. Why is it larger than potassium? So we do a quick comparison. Based on electrons, they have the same number of electrons. So same number of shells, 288. But Potassium have more protons, so it will be able to pull the outer ring closer to itself compared to sulfur because of the lower attraction with less protons. So that's why sulfur is larger. Potassium with more protons will pull the outer ring closer. So the potassium ion has more protons in the nucleus than the sulfide ions. That's why the ions for potassium is smaller.